Welcome back to another 3D Jake review and this time we're checking out the Elegoo 7 III and 3 Ultra. These guys have 10 inch LCDs, 12K resolution, pixel size of 19 by 24 micrometers. They can print really big and are really good quality. Let's break it down. Both the Saturn III and the 3 Ultra have a build space of 218.88 by 122.88 millimeters. There is a slight difference on the Ultra which has a Z axis 10 millimeters higher than the standard version. They both have the same resolution. They have a very, very similar screen, but there are also a few little differences and a couple of big differences too. So first up, this is not a lead screw, okay? The Saturn III Ultra uses a ball screw and the difference is a lead screw uses a screw thread to move up and down, whereas the ball screw uses ball bearings, of course. This makes it a lot more rigid and a lot more accurate. And because of this, the Saturn III Ultra can reach high speeds up to 150 millimeters per hour. Now, I'm not just talking about exposure speed here. Uh, we're using our Eco Resin, which is pretty standard in terms of exposure. 2.5 seconds is totally enough. You can get high speed resin that will lower that value a bit. But I'm also talking about the lift speed and the retract speed of the platform. The bigger the platform, the lower that speed needs to be because it is heavy, it's big, it's 220 million years across almost. And the same rules for print heads on FDM printers apply to this. So it really needs an upgrade to that standard eight millimeter lead screw that you see on the normal version and pretty much every other resin printer. And having a printer this big and also reaching 150 millimeters per hour is not to be sneezed at, especially when considering the Mars 3 Pro had a top speed of 50 millimeters per hour and the Saturn II had a top speed of 70 millimeters per hour. I'm not sure if you guys remember the Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. It was a great printer, came out a couple of years ago. Great printer, it had one flaw. The Z axis was not that rigid at high speed. So when you were pushing it a bit, uh, it tended to give a bit of flex. Now Frozen came out with a fix sometime after that, but it serves as a great example as to why you should have your Z axis really, really rigid and secure on a resin printer. It is the only part on this printer that moves. Make sure you get it right. The other thing the Ultra has over the standard version is the Wi-Fi. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Wi-Fi. It's, it's useful, I guess. Right now, you're in the 3D Jake workshop. This is where the messy stuff happens. It's downstairs. But we do a lot of stuff upstairs as well, where the other Eloy are. So Wi-Fi is pretty useful, simply so I can eliminate the use of a USB or an SD card, because I tend to forget it upstairs, and I have to go back upstairs, and there's only one elevator in the office. I have to wait for that and then I have to talk to someone maybe and then I come back here and then I realize that I haven't got the USB again so I have to go upstairs again it's a cyclical thing life is hard I would have to, to see one other feature on the ultra and basically any other resin printer that has wi-fi connectivity and that would have been a camera I think remote printer monitoring is far more relevant for a resin printer than it is for an FDM printer. Pretty much every FDM printer that has Wi-Fi has a camera option. So why not resin? Moving over to the tanks and we can see that there are actually two different films used here. So FEP is dead. The Ultra has an ACF film and the standard is a PFA film. So the PFA is a halogen polymer like FEP or PTFE. Low friction coefficients, very tough, but ACF is actually made of epoxy resin. I'll be honest, I don't know zip about these. On the Ultra with the ACF film, it looks sort of matte on one side and frosted rather than completely transparent like FEP or PFA. This is my first time using something like this, but Frozen and Anycubic have started using it too. So perhaps this is just going to be the new norm. But I've had no issues with prints sticking to the ACF film. It seems to be doing a great job. Also on both printers, there are tempered glass screen protectors to protect the LCD from any resin spills that might happen, let's, let's be honest, it does happen sometimes. By the way, if you do use our own resin and you need a better option for pouring back resin into your resin bottle, then you can get our funnels for use with both our 500 milliliters and 1000 milliliter bottles. They just screw on, you place a filter on top and boom, put that resin back in the bottle. I will say though that the leveling on the standard version was a little less intuitive than I thought it would be. I was using the leveling card to check the Z offset after securing everything. And there was a lot more resistance than I expected. I thought that the leveling was done, that the platform was at the right height, uh, but it wasn't and the print failed. And that was the only problem I had with the printer. Um, and I don't know why it wasn't with this printer. I guess it was because of the drag caused by the tape that goes over the gaps between the LCD and the frame of the printer. Uh, I guess it wasn't pushed down enough, but I re-leveled it again, taking into consideration what had happened before, and it worked fine. 
Another difference between the printers is that the Ultra has a collimator lens on the light source and the standard one has a refractive lens. Now, I actually haven't been able to see a difference between the two. They basically do the same thing. They make sure the light is parallel before it hits the actual resin from prints that we've tested. I don't know, I can't see a difference. And I wish Ellie would go into much more detail about this because the way they say it, it sounds more like a buzzword than anything else. They do say that the standard version has 92% uniformity with its light, uh, but they don't go into that much detail about how they have different advantages or disadvantages. I wish they did. Next up is the leveling screws. Now on the standard version, we have the standard Elegoo setup with two big screws, whereas on the Ultra version, we have four smaller screws. The hold on the Ultra is very secure. I only had to level this once and secure it once, and that was it. I haven't had to change anything at all. Normally, I am a little bit paranoid when it comes to the leveling on a resin printer, especially because sometimes, depending on the model, you might have to really smack that spatula onto the base of the model for it to release. And unfortunately, that is completely unavoidable with Elegoo's test piece, the Rook, because that has a flat base and there is no angle at all. It's just placed directly on this. So when you do print it, you really got to smack it off with the spatula. I did this and luckily I didn't have to re-level it again. I was a little bit nervous about doing it, but I printed directly after that and there was no issues and I still haven't had any problems with this after several prints. It is very secure. I also really like the laser engraved surface, which gives you better adhesion, but it also imprints this cool pattern on the base. Still, please don't arrange your models like this. 45 degree tilt works okay. Quick touch on the similarities though. It looks like they both have the same LCD. The build volume is the same, apart from the Ultra having a slightly bigger Z axis, 10 millimeters, not a huge amount. Both come with an air purifier, although the Ultra has an extra port for another. It doesn't come with two though, it only comes with one. Both actually use heat pipes for cooling and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know of another printer that uses these. Both printers have recommended slicers of Cheetah Box or Voxel Vance Tango, but I'm sure you could get Lightsheet to work for it as well. Okay, features aside, these printers print nicely and I'm not a huge fan of resin printing. I don't like the, the cleanup, I don't like the setup, I don't like the post processing. I'm an FDM kind of person. But using these has been an enjoyable experience. It has felt very fluid and easy to use. I really like how secure the build platforms are, especially on the Ultra. I don't like having to fiddle with leveling for every single print that I'm doing. So this has been really refreshing and nice to use. As you can see, detail is crisp and true. You have a big space to print and the speed on the Ultra is great for those of you who want to print fast. I love the detail that comes out, especially on our black eco resin. It definitely doesn't disappoint when it comes to the resolution. Honestly though, if you want a printer for performance, I don't see the advantage of getting the Ultra. It's faster, sure. Although to take full advantage of that, you need to use a high-speed resin, which slightly limits you, for instance, if you generally only use specialty resins like flex, tough, miscible kinds, ceramic type, or casting resins. It's still relatively niche for a lot of these, but the applications exist. And I'm printing things that require a day and a night to complete, even, even large things that would approach the max build volume. Yes, there are other features like the ACF film and the Wi-Fi. It makes it a bit easier and efficient, but in terms of the finished project, there isn't much of a difference. Both still have a 12K LCD. Whether you think the extra 100-ish euro is justified depends on your routine with resin printing. You want the extra speed? Sure, go for it. Are you not on the schedule? Man, don't get it. But what do you guys think of these results? Are these good for the price tag? And would you want a higher speed printer for that extra 100 euro? But what do you think about the other features like the ACF and the Wi-Fi? Is Wi-Fi a genuine feature that you would use for your application? That's all for the Saturn 3 series today. But if you have a question that wasn't brought up in the video, then please let us know in the comments below or write us an email. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.